Lord, you see our needs tonight, Jesus. God, we're asking you to touch. God, you see them coming, God. You see them that are on the way. Cover them in the blood. Jesus, we ask you to move. God, in a mighty, mighty way. Lord, we always needed in that refreshment. God, that special touch, we ask in you tonight. God, in your name, Jesus, it's your glory, your power, your words, your anointing, Lord, to fill this tabernacle, this tent, Lord. God, one more time tonight, Lord. God, we ask in you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord, flow out of our belly like rivers of living water, Lord. God, uphold us with the right hand of your righteousness. God, there's souls that's weighed in the balance, Lord. God, in this old world that we're living in, Lord, that God, we're praying for strength tonight, that God, you'll touch your people, Lord. You'll give them that special touch tonight, God. God, that they carry it, Lord. God, it'll rest upon them your power and your glory. God, in your presence, will rest upon them for days to come. Lord, we ask you to move, God. We invite you under this tent tonight. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you said, what two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them, Lord. God, we stand up on your word tonight, Lord. God, we believe in you for a special touch. God, I'm moving in the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, Lord. God, we ask you tonight, Lord, to speak, Lord. Anoint the song service, Lord. Lord, Brother Reed, touch him, God, strengthen him, Lord. God, move upon everyone here tonight, God. God, we give you glory. We praise you. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we come to worship you and adore you tonight. We want to thank you, Jesus. God, for the miracles, God, that's took place in this revival under this tent. God, all the healings that took place, God. The souls that got saved, yokes has been destroyed. God, by the power of your words, your anointing, Lord. God, we want to thank you for this tonight. Lord, right now we give you praise and we know that it's more to come. We believe in you for it, God. Oh, God. Thank you for just letting us be a part, Lord. God, you could have went by somewhere else, but you touched us. And you touched our lives and you changed us. And Lord, you told us to come follow you, Lord. And we thank you tonight, God, that Jesus and you gave us an opportunity, Lord. And that we're able to be a part, God, in this revival by the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we give you the glory. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise tonight. Praise God as Sister Nadia is on her way to come. I mean, he knows at night that Jesus is able. You know, it don't matter what your need is, praise God. He's able to meet that need, praise God. I appreciate the Lord what he's been doing in this revival, praise God. All week long, you can feel the power of God. You can feel God's anointing. You can feel his love and his presence. Praise the Lord, there ain't nothing like the presence of the Lord, Brother Jody. Praise God that it touch you and it'll strengthen you and wash you and cleanse you. And it'll make you want to just stay right there in that one spot and say, Lord, Lord, as I feel that Holy Ghost fountain pouring out of heaven. God, I just don't want to move, Lord. God, I just want to be right here where the rain is falling, praise God. You know, a lot of people, when they go to rain in the natural, praise God, the first thing they want to do is run on the inside, get somewhere where it's dry. But tonight, this old spiritual rain of the Holy Ghost, praise God, it'll make you just want to stand out there all night on the show. It'll make you just want to just get somewhere and just stay under that spout, praise God, and just say, Lord, just keep that rain coming on down, Lord. God, turn on that water spout. Let it flow, God. God, let us get another drink tonight, Lord. God, he told that Samaritan woman, he said, if you knew who it was, it was asking you for a drink, you'd say, give me a drink of that living water. He said he'd be in up to well, springing up in the everlasting life. Praise God. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Sister Daniel comes. Come on, let's stand up on our feet. Let's honor the Lord tonight. Worship Jesus. Glory to God. Come on, sister. Pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Don't you love him tonight, church? Go ahead and slip your hands up to him and tell him you love him tonight. Thank God I am.
that praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I tell you what, if you thank God, if you was out there drown, drowned in it, thank God and you begin to sink when you begin to holler for help. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. I said, wouldn't you begin to holler for some help? Praise God. It wouldn't matter who was sitting beside you, who was on the other end, who was across the hall. You just looking for some help. Ain't that right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Do you need any help tonight? Thank you, Jesus. He said, do you need any help tonight? Come on, won't you call on Jesus tonight? Thank God. Like you that drowning man said, help me, Lord. You begin to call out, help me, Jesus. Thank God. You know, if you don't need no help, you... Thank God, I had a dream the other night that we was in a place and there was people all the way around and there's a storm come in. Thank God, and I dreamt we was trapped there and I began to holler, help. Help me. I began to holler louder, help. Help. Thank God, they were they inside and said, can't nobody hear me. I said, well, I'm going to still holler, help. Praise God, you know, I dreamt there was people far off. Thank God, and they couldn't hit me, but there was... One man, and thank God, that was on the other side by himself. And I dreamt I began to holler at him. Thank God, he began to look at me, let me know he heard me. You know, sometimes if we just keep calling, thank God, from the devil said, Jesus don't hear you. Thank God, just begin to holler help a little bit louder. Ain't that right? Thank God, whatever the situation may be, if we're just hollering again to pray a little bit longer, call a little bit louder, can you say amen? Can you say amen tonight? Praise God. I tell you what, looking for the Lord to do something. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Somebody even begin to holler help. Thank God there was a story one time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, it, it, it don't matter when it's somebody else, but when it's you, you want some help, don't you? Thank God. You don't look at about what you've done or how you done it, but you find you say, Lord, I need some help here. Can you say me? Thank God. I tell you what, I tell you, the Lord's truly been sitting around this place. I said the Holy Ghost has truly been in this place. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to just thank God for it tonight. Thank God. We're not going to treat it like it's the last night. We're going to treat it like it's the first night. Ain't that right? Thank God. We ain't going to get in no hurry. We're going to wait upon the Lord. The Bible said those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Thank you, Jesus. Are you willing to wait tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Are you coming and look for the same old thing? Come in the same old way? Thank God. You know, sometimes, thank God, you know, if we're just beginning to praise God, that's what moves the Lord. Thank God from one minute to the next. Thank God um, your whole life could change if you would allow, if you allow Jesus to do it. Thank God, but when you're looking for this one to do it, are you looking for that one to do it? And God said, no, Jonah, I'm looking for you to do it. Ain't that right? He said, Lord, you're just going to do, you're just going to do what you want to do. You're going to turn him out and going to destroy him. Why should I go? But Jesus said, Jonah, go. Thank God. Jonah said, well, no, I just go catch me a different boat and I go the other way. Well, you may not be warning that person. Ain't that right? Thank God. Do you know if God would have just turned his wrath and went ahead and destroyed them, because of Jonah's disobedience, that don't seem like that'd be too fair, would it? Praise God. So why would it be fair for you tonight? If God's telling you to do something, if it was wrong for Jonah, ain't it wrong for you too? Ain't that right? I said, if God's telling you to do something, praise God. Thank God, don't you think it's about time that, thank God, if they throw you overboard, you want just to throw you overboard and have to get all the way down to that belly of hell? Praise God. Don't you want to just go without all that tonight? Praise God. Said, how many just wants to do it free will tonight? Come on and lift your hand and say, Lord, I just want to do the will of God. Thank God, that's what's wrong today. Nobody, nobody wants to say, Lord, here I am. They say, use me, but they don't want to say, Lord, do whatever it takes to use me. Like, well, Lord, I, I want to have this, and I, I want it easier like this, and I want to go over there, and I don't want to go through nothing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God, instead of saying, Lord, just use me. Thank God, just use me, Lord, no matter what it takes. Thank you, Lord. So many people say, man, I wish I wouldn't have prayed that prayer. Thank God, because I, I fell into this. Well, praise God, God's using you. You know, Jonah, he didn't want to go either when he fell in that, bell, that whale's belly. Thank God, he began to change his mind, didn't he? He said, God, if you just, he said, from the belly of hell, I cried out, and God heard my prayer. 
Thank God. In the, you know, the weapon wouldn't spit him out. The big fish wouldn't spit him out. Ain't that right? Thank God. Are you tired of being in that place? Thank God. You're saying, God, use me. God, use me. But Lord, don't put that on me because I don't, I don't want to go through that. Praise God. It's just time to turn loose and let the Lord use you. Ain't that right? Thank God. How many just wants the Lord to use you tonight? Praise the Lord. Sister Teresa, come around tonight. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on around tonight. Testify and sing. Praise God. Come on and stand to your feet tonight. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory. Appreciate the Lord tonight. Amen. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord truly is good to His people. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I was just thinking about Sister Betty Rose. Amen. The, the Lord has really done a great work in her life. Amen. She, they diagnosed her with cancer four years ago. And she didn't let them do surgery on her arm. She would be going cut up in her arm. And they wanted to do surgery on her arm to take it out, but she wouldn't let them. Amen. She began to get people to pray for her. Amen. Hallelujah. Just trying to have the faith to believe for a miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And then a year went on. Amen. They said it wasn't a fast-growing cancer, but if the seed would get off, amen, and get into the bloodstream, it would go to her lungs, and it would cause her to have lung cancer, amen, and it would kill her. Amen. But she still kept pushing on and pressing on, amen, believing and trusting in the Lord for a miracle, for a healing, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, getting everybody to pray for her. Thank you, Lord, with just this January, amen. Hallelujah. We transferred her insurance and everything down to, to Tennessee. Amen. Hallelujah. Because uh, she was fighting fear and battling with fear. Amen. The devil attacked her with fear. So she was going to go ahead and get that surgery done. And I've been praying for her. And I asked the Lord. I said, God, please, Lord, help her to hold on to you, Lord. Help her to hold on. God, because I know, Lord Jesus, God, you are the miracle worker. You are the way maker, Lord. There ain't nothing to
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to try to sing a little chorus. Amen. I think it's in the key of me. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, send it on down. Send it on down. Thank God we'll 
Do like uh, the man of God said, we either get right or we we get left behind. Ain't that right? We'll be over there with the goat, Sister Danielle. Thank God if we don't get right, praise the Lord. Thank God if we can't do that love that he's been talking about, praise God. I tell you what, we won't make it, praise the Lord. Praise God. Somebody put your hands together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Says so God been good to you, praise God. I said the Lord been good to you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet tonight. Thank you, Jesus. And we begin to worship the Lord. If you're able, praise God. Thank you, Jesus.
said, I is a river. Thank you, Jesus. They said it come up all the way from heaven. They said it come all the way from heaven. Praise God. Thank God to be that remedy. When they said the bull, the blood of bulls and goats. Thank God they said that ain't good enough. Thank God he had to have that perfect sacrifice. Praise God. He come all the way from heaven. Thank God. Thank God to be that remedy tonight. Thank God all, on all sin sick soul. When we had our own evil ways. When we didn't even care about ourselves. Thank God he cared about us. Ain't that right? Oh, ain't you so glad tonight? I said, ain't you so glad tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Thank God that there's a remedy tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God there's still a remedy tonight. Thank God that it's through the word of God. Somebody say it's through Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He said, heaven and earth may pass away. He said, but my word's going to stand. But he said, whosoever will that are called upon the name of the Lord. Ain't that right? He said, it shall be saved. Ain't that right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Let's begin to call on Jesus tonight. I said, my God, let me tell you something tonight. We just call on Jesus. Thank God, you see a lot of this other stuff move out of your way. Quit trying to look over somewhere to get it fixed over yonder. Thank God, when you know what to do already, you know where to go to already, you know where to, to get on your knees and find yourself in prayer instead of trying to run to this one or run over yonder to that. Thank God we're trying to go for another few dollars to fix the problem. Thank God we need to go to Jesus. Ain't that right? I said we need to run to Jesus tonight with everything in us. Praise God. Thank God there's a remedy tonight. Thank you, Jesus. His name is Jesus. Thank God you can't buy your way out of this stuff. You can't work your way out of it. I said you got to humble yourself and get on your knees. Thank God you say, well, maybe next week. Well, next week never comes. God, I'm going to do better when, when I do this. But maybe, I don't never do better because it don't never come. Because you know what? When you're doing the wrong thing, God can't bless you. Ain't that right? When you're saying the wrong prayer, you're praying the wrong way. That ain't nothing to God. You're just wasting your breath. Praise God. But one thing about it is you'll just get on your knees and just get honest with God. You ain't got to go tell the world. You can get in your clothes and tell Jesus. Ain't that right? I said you can tell Jesus what's wrong. And He'll fix it. And He won't tell a soul, will He? He won't run you down. He won't tell you how sorry you've been or what you've done or how many times you've done. But well, when you get down on your knees and you, you can't even hold it, get it out. You just say, Jesus. God, Lord, you know my heart. God, help me. Then God can help you, that right? I said He's a remedy tonight. When you go to the right one, He can help you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Come on, lift your hands for heaven tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. I just wonder if anybody in this revival has got a testimony. Something that God's done for you. That you just want to tell the Lord. Or share it tonight. I'm going to give you this opportunity to do it. Praise God if you want to say, get up and say what the Lord's done for you, how He's done it. Thank God. That's what we used to do. It says, anybody got a testimony? Thank God. Yeah, they, they, they ain't lined up. You, you have to watch how you ask because they ain't lined up. Now nobody's got a testimony. They, they don't want to tell what the Lord's done. But has anybody? Has anybody got a testimony tonight? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You want to take something for the Lord? Praise God. Well, come on up and say something for the Lord then. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God.
Faith is what got me through. Number two, calling on someone that has that relationship with God. You can't just call upon anybody without they call upon the name of Jesus. You got to know that they got that faith of God. Plus they got that dedication of that relationship with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Well, I'm in, I'm in prayer in a hospital. And I've been listening to Brother Reed for about a year before I got sick. And it's been like over four years now I've been wanting to come and see Brother Reed, go to Brother Cooper for their friends. But anyway, um, before I knew that I was going to a coma, I told the nurses, I said, look, keep my, my earbuds in, keep my phone on, and my phone charged on Brother Wilbur Reed. Yeah. Yeah. When I went to that coma, I was listening to him. When I came out of that coma, I was listening to him. When I was paralyzed and blind, I was listening to him. They wanted nothing that was going to take me from listening to the Word, to that true Word of Jesus Christ. Yes. I love it when somebody preaches heaven and hell. Because I'm going to tell you, me and my sister Vicki, we looked all over, but we can't find no other preacher like that. Now, Brother Cooper, yes, he's a man of God. That is true. But at this time, I was searching. I was searching. But the whole time, I was listening to Brother Reed preach heaven and hell. Heaven and hell. Faith, 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 faith. And I stayed in the hospital for about three months. And I came out, praise God. And uh, God seemed fit to let me live. Right. He seemed fit to let me walk. Yeah. He seemed fit to let me So uh, they were having a revival going on at Brother um, Cooper's. And I told my sister Vicky back there in the back, I said, the night's going to be my night. Because God's going to fill my lungs. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And this time, yeah. I, I could hear because that COVID, so much coughing and everything, but but to my eardrums. Yes. And so I went uh, to pray. And I have a, my uh, oxygen on me, you know, and I got up. And uh, Brother Reed, he was standing there. He was, I don't know what he was saying. I couldn't hear it, you know. And I, I couldn't hear because I was almost dead. And I've been coming to this service, service like that. But the other night I came up and got prayer. Now I can hear good. My cousin back there, he hollered at me, Janice, but you have to holler real loud because I can't hear. Well, yeah, now praise God. I turned around and my brother reached up and he said, God's going to hear your lungs tonight. Thank you, Jesus. And I told my sister back then, I said, if I could only get to Brother Reed, my lungs will be healed. I was willing to give up anything and everything to get to the man of God. It's not Wilbur Reed, but it is God of mine. He has a side of Wilbur Reed. That is a true man of God. And I just want to give you the time for the glory and our praise. I don't want to lose the Bible now for over four years. To be under a me. That's what makes me so excited to look at what God has done. Somebody shout praise God. Somebody thank the Lord. Just thank God for healing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. Praise God. Thank God. That means something, don't it? Thank God. When it ain't you, it may not mean much. Thank God. But you lay it down. You can't breathe. It don't mean much when you came here. Praise God. It means something when God reaches down. Thank God. Let that woman with the issue of blood that searched all over spend all she had. She said, if I can but touch just the hem of his God. Thank you, Jesus. I know I've been made whole. Praise God. We just touched Jesus. Thank God. He said, your faith has made you whole. Come on, say, your faith has made you whole. Come on, so many people have this hollow faith tonight. Say, just a little bit of faith. He said, every man was given a measure of faith. He said, it's without faith that's impossible, praise God.
Praise, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on around tonight. We want to give you a chance to help us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, and offer praise the Lord. Praise God. Somebody say faith. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we go on is faith. Take that right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God I remember doing all that COVID. Thank you, Jesus. They was shutting the churches down and all that. Brother Big said, we're going to the parking lot then. He said, we're going to the parking lot. Thank God had such a burden. He would begin to pray. Sister Chelsea, he would begin to pray. At the end of that service, he said, let's stretch our hands. And he'd stretch it for the camera and he'd begin to say, God, I rebuke this COVID. God, I drive this COVID back. God, I curse this COVID. Lord, touch them. Thank God there was people calling in saying that they, they was in there and they began to just reach toward that camera on that phone. And that one fella, he was over there and he said it. He was there and he was dying. Thank God, but you know what? He said, right there, he began to call and he began to pick that COVID up. And it come out and he had it just puking up all over him. God just give him a miracle. You know why? Because it's faith when he's reaching out. But there's got to be somebody. I said there's got to be somebody. Say a prayer. Say Jesus. Call on Jesus. There's got to be somebody saying, Lord, Jesus, stop in the leap. Don't we stretch our hands in faith. Oh, hallelujah tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Somebody just having a burden when you say, praise God. He said, who will I send and who will go for us? And Isaiah spoke up and he said, send me, Lord. I'll go. Thank God. I wonder how many tonight will just go. I've got to go ahead and come bring you off. Tonight. I just feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, obey the Lord tonight. I said, just obey the Lord tonight. Then I started not feeling good and everything. And I come close, you know, 
on, you know, calling my cousin all and, and telling her, you know, you know, just go ahead. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Well, before I would have, and everything. Then um, it ended up I was boiling some eggs, had to throw it through about two or three of them away because they were tore. About that time, I told me and the devil had a little talk. I said, all right, devil. I said, you're making me mad. I'm fixing it. I'm fixing it. I'm not yet. And uh, well, I guess he got that punch because I ended up coming anyway. Yes, yes. And uh, and uh, I come up. I think it was. I think it was sad. Yeah, Saturday. I come up and I got prayer because I was having. I've been having a lot of you know massive pain in my side too. And I come up and I got prayer for you know the pain in my side and the tingling and everything. Well, this past um, those uh, Wednesday and Thursday, I knew I wasn't going to be able to come. The Lord knows all about it and everything. But um, Wednesday night. Uh, I'd asked Sister Hand if there was any church, and you know she said she didn't know, you know, because of everybody being up here and all. And I told her I said, well, I said I'll just run out there and check, and if not, I'll go ahead and I'll, you know, stay and go up underneath the tent and pray. Well, I, you know, went up underneath the tent because there wasn't no church, and went up underneath the tent and I started praying and I started crying, talking to the Lord, rebelling just like I did. And I tell you what, I praise God. There was no tingling. There was nothing upon me and everything. And I just thank the Lord. And I uh, tell you, on the way here and on, I know, you know, you got to pray. So the devil's still going to try to fight you. He tried me out here and all. Uh, and uh, I started, you know, with the, with the pain. It started heaviness in my chest. Started getting where I, you know, I was having trouble breathing and everything like that. And, you know, I sat up in the car. And uh, my cousin law she come out there and she asked me if, you know, she, if I was all right. I said, you know, I told her. I said, I told her what was going on. I sat there for a few minutes. And then, uh, she, I guess, you know, she went and took care of everything. What she was doing, she come back. And said, you know, got up in the car and everything. I told her, I said, it's trying to calm down. It's trying to calm down. She told me, she said, well, you know, just, you know, take your time. I said, no, I said, I'm not going to let the devil win. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm getting out. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm coming up in here. And I thank the Lord because as soon as I did, it's breaking off. And I praise God. I praise God. I'm telling you, you got to press no matter what. you got to press. And I press and I thank the Lord that I did because I know that God's going to heal me. I know He touched me in my body. I know I'm not, not, I changed that. I know that I'm, that I'm, I know that I'm healed. I know that I'm healed. I know that I'm healed. Because I obeyed and I came and I pressed and I thank the Lord for it. And I thank Him. You got to press, I'm telling you. Oh, let's give Jesus a big old hand clap of praise tonight. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the praise. Thank you, Lord. Let's stand our feet tonight. Let's get ready. Receive the man of God tonight. How many's enjoy this revival? Well, it ain't over yet. It ain't over till it's over. I love you, Lord. And your mercy never fails. All of my days.
I break this fever right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I dissolve this sickness, this infirmity. You said we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Lord, I believe for a miracle now in Jesus' name. Lord, I curse it, this infirmity. I curse this infirmity. You foul devil. The sickness. Fever. I curse you. I drive you out of her body. In Jesus' name. Be healed. By the power of God. I take away all this sickness. And I make you well. In Jesus' name. And by his stripes. I give you a mirror. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Lord, by the name of the I command all this sickness to depart from her body. Go back. To the pits from which it came. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God.
Give her what she want. Give her what she want. She said, tell not God. Hear what the unjust judge said. Shall not God avenge his own evil? The cry unto him day and night. I say he will avenge them speedily. Quickly. Praise God. Prayer still moves God. And if it don't move it right, if the minute keep on praying, it will move. Sometimes he's just waiting on you. Sometimes he's just testing your faith. Sometimes he's waiting on you to come back again and ask again. He said, you have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask not. Praise God. A lot of times we think it, but we don't really ask it. We think how things ought to be. We think how what folks supposed to be doing or what God we think it needs to do, but we don't ask. We don't just come blank, point blank, fall on our knees and ask Him for it. Because He said, you have not because you ask. You ask not, really. You don't get it. Think it in your mind. Boy, my children need to be saved. You tell somebody else. Tell nobody else. Go tell Jesus. Come to Jesus and ask. Ask for your children. Point blank. Just come to Jesus and say, Lord, I, I want my children saved. You said I could have what I ask. I want my children saved. I'm tired of waiting. I want to see my children saved. And the Lord showed me like people was they think it up to tell each other. And, and, and it's like they think they've done ask God. You ain't ask God nothing because you tell somebody. He knows what you need. But he likes for us to come to him and ask him. Don't send him word. Go to him yourself. He that cometh to me. He that cometh to me. I will in no wise cast him out. And I believe that God's people start coming to him directly and asking directly. We will begin to see more done than we're seeing. He said, I'll contend with him that contendeth with thee. And I will save your children. I contend with him that contend with thee. A devil. That's who's contending with you. It's the devil. And I will save your children. That's what he promised. That's what he promised. Thank you, Jesus. Don't you love him? I tell this whole church, this whole church, we need to renew it. Just about everything we ever had. I said we need to restore it and renew it. And just about everything we once had, the church once had, we need to renew it and restore it. Back. And that's what he said. I will restore. I will restore the years. We've lost years. I will restore their years. That the canker worm and the caterpillar and the bone. You know that woman came back. The prophet told her to go, go away for seven years. In that seven years, she packed up and said, I'm going home. And she came back. And somebody was living in the house. 
Somebody occupied a property. Because there was a famine and the prophet told her to go. Survive somewhere else. But when she come back, somebody was in her house. And she went and said, I want my house back. I want my house back. Praise God. Somebody's in my house. Somebody's eating out of my garden. Somebody's sleeping in my bed. I want my house back. I mean, it was back from the devil what he stole from me. That faith, that power, that dedication, that prayer life. Get a grip. A hold on God. And she was And she come back. The servant, the man of God's servant was telling them out. How that God had raised a woman's son from the dead. It just happened. And she was telling the king about how Elijah, Elijah had to raise that woman's son from the dead. Here come in the woman. He said, my Lord, King, this is, this is the woman and this is the boy. See, God had it fixed because after seven years, God told her to go back home. And she had, he had it all fixed. And the king told him, said, you go and you give this woman everything her fields or garden was raised for seven years. She was gone for seven years. She said, give it all back to her. Go back for seven years and give it every bit back to her. Restore what she's lost all these seven years. And she got it back. She got a house back. She got a land back. And then it was God to give it back to you. He'll refill you with the Holy Ghost. And if you don't just get the Holy Ghost once, you get refilling. You don't, you don't go out there and gas up that car one time either. You got to go by the pump. And those we got to go by the pump. We got to regas up. That old needle starts getting down on empty. That light pops on. You better find the gas station. Same thing with God. Have you noticed when, when you feel that drilling away on the inside, you feel something dying on the inside. You feel the weakness. You feel unbelief. You just don't feel what you used to feel. It's time for a refill. How the Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, the church needs a refill tonight. Let me lift your hands and say, God, I need a refill. I need a refill of the Holy Ghost. I need a refill of the Holy Ghost. I need a refill of the Holy Ghost. You know, just here in the fourth chapter of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 4. I believe this is 35 years after. You know, they got the Holy Ghost in Acts 2. They have Pentecost. And full of calm, they come a sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. Fill all the house where they were sitting. I was at the period of them clothed their tongues like as a fire. Now all were filled with the Holy Ghost and begin to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise God. There's been a, been a lot went on. A lot of it ain't been real. A lot has been real. I said, a lot of it going on now ain't real. But I tell you what, when you want the real, you go back to the original. And the original is Acts, the book of Acts 2. Where the, he told them in uh, Luke 24, 49, 49, said, go and tarry. Behold, I send the promise. A 
of my Father upon you. But carry you. Carry. Wait. Go back to the altar. You know, it ain't worth going back to the altar for and tearing for. You probably ain't going to get a refill. That's like guys being willing to pay for it. You probably ain't nobody going to give you none. You lay around the pump waiting for somebody to buy it for you. You probably be there for a while. But it told us that going down in the city of Jerusalem. Wait! Until you be endued with power. But this was about, I believe, 35 years later. The disciples was persecution that broke out after the book of Acts. After the Holy Ghost came and God began to use them. The Holy Ghost was Christ in them. And God began to use them mightily. And great persecution came out against the church and the apostles. And it wasn't no easy road. But God was moving. The world was being shook with the power of God. But here it is in Acts 4 and 29. They said, And now, Lord, behold, they're threatening. See, they were threatening them. And go out to thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. You know, if they're threatening folks, putting them in jail, whooping them, and killing them. You need boldness to get out there and preach. I said you need boldness to get out there and continue on. Not only for them, for us too. You know they're going to be coming out to folks like us for long. They're already going after the political people that are standing for something. They're trying to destroy Trump now. It's as hard as they can destroy somebody. I told him, I said, El Chapo didn't get him any counts that Trump did. <laughs> but he was counted for killing 200 people himself. But they're trying to destroy him because they know he's going to finish draining the swamp. Yeah. Boy, when he started draining that swamp, there was some stuff coming out of it. And it's still coming out. I said it's still coming out. The Democrat Party is the Antichrist Party. About two-thirds of the Republican Party is an Antichrist Party. See, we're not depending on Democrat and Republican. We're depending on Jesus. But God, God can't put a man in there. He did put Trump in there. He did use him to turn this nation around. And the devil put this in the end. He brought it to hell. That the government's backing up all this evil. Transgender, cutting, our, cutting children up. Using tax dollars. Pushing evil. Upon people. But we're not trusting in man. We're putting our trust in God. He said in my people. Which are called by my name. Will humble themselves. And pray. And seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Forgive their sins and heal the land. You know, Trump's the only president I've ever seen holding the Bible up. And said Jesus Christ is the greatest man that ever lived. And he told the preacher, said, go ahead, preachers, preach, I got your back. Preach, I got your back. I heard him. And still church folks hate him. It ain't about Democrat and Republican. It's about right and wrong, folks. That's what it's about right and wrong. Whoever's right is right. Whoever's wrong is wrong. I don't care what kind of name he's got attached to him. If he's right, he's right.
But I did vote for him twice. And I vote for him the next time if he runs. God. That's my business. And it's yours. Who will you vote for? Ain't that the truth? But he did turn things around. You gotta admit that. You gotta admit that ain't nobody ever tried to destroy like they're to trying to destroy him. Trying to lock him up, trying to put him in jail. Why he drained the swamp? He revealed those evil lifetime politicians that wasn't in there for nothing but themselves. And he stood for the Bible. And he stood for what was right. If a man stands for what was right, I'm gonna stand for him. And what we got in office now stands for everything that's wrong. He's a crook. His whole family's a crook. He sold us out to China. He said, well, y'all not politicking. I'm not politicking. I'm dealing with evil leaders. Just like the men in the Bible. There were those evil kings. Elijah dealt with Ahab. God sent him to deal with him. I said, God sent Elijah to deal with Ahab and Jezebel. They was a leader. Some of us got to deal with this evil stuff. Reveal it. Pull the cover off of it. Show them that evil. Yeah, when that went out there and married Jezebel, brought him into God's house, brought him into Israel, God's country. And she brought her gods. She didn't, she didn't turn to God. She didn't turn to God. She brought her gods. Her bell gods. He built her temple. And she contaminated all of Israel. Well, that old Jezebel stuff. She contaminated. Just like the world now, the churches are contaminated with that Jezebel spirit. Not for the truth. Don't want no truth. What we need is truth. We got to go back to the foundation of the apostles and the prophets and stand on the truth. And even the thing that sticks his head up that ain't right, shoot at him. He said, Having done all to stand, stand. Having done all to stand, stand. See, he would hold him back with the mouth shut. It's time to get up and take a stand for God. Take a stand for the Lord. Hallelujah. God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. Have been done all to stand. Get back up and stand again. Get back up. He said, "Put your glove back." Act like that old fighter. Getting beat down. And the manager kept looking at him, checking the towel out. He kept saying, oh, I'm going to sit that little towel in on me. I mean, I don't want, don't want nobody to throw no towel in on me. Don't, don't give up on me. Don't you give up. Don't throw no towel in on me. I ain't over yet. The battle ain't over yet. I said, the fight ain't over yet. The battle ain't over yet. Don't you throw no towel in on me. I'm going to fight to the finish. What about you? 
We have room out there for somebody to run around the table. Come on in here. Go ahead. Watch the star.
She said, oh, Samson, you lied to me. Tell me why your strength is. See, it was money for her. It was money. She didn't love Samson. She was getting paid to take him out. Find out where his strength was because they could not do nothing with Israel as long as Samson was alive. And had that anointing. She said, well, you tie me with seven green with Said, I'd be like you. Tied him, put him to sleep, lured him to sleep. Put his head in the lap again. There he goes again. Sleep. And Samson, the fellow's time to be upon you. He chomped and flexed the step again. They popped off like thread. And she wept and said, you lie to me. You don't love me. So will you weed my hair? Into the beans, weave his hair, put him to sleep again. Yeah. Samson, the fellow's time to be upon you. He jumped up, snatched all that loose. She wept again and said, Oh, Samson, you don't love me. Really, this time, tell me. You gotta tell me. Yeah. You can't lie to me no more. Right. She wore him down. Him was the devil wearing him down. He wear you down. You gotta let him know the first time you mean business. Sometimes you have to get something and chase him. Get you something and chase him away. To let him know you really mean business. I shoot at him two or three times. He said, Well. I'm going to tell you the truth. Said, These seven locks on my head. Said, they, that's where my, that's my dedication. My Nazarite. And said, if you shave them locks off, I would never, ever hope to touch them. That's where my dedication. That's what the devil's after. And that's why he, he went after the church's dedication. Discouragement. Splitting up, fighting each other. Preachers going into false doctrines. Discouraging the people. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yeah. He would just begin to say, what's the use? See, the devil sets it all up. Yeah. To get to the people, to get next to the people. He said, look, every time we get somewhere, we go, we go this route. But don't you throw that towel in. Don't you throw that towel in. We're in a battle, we're in a fight, and where there was a where there was a Moses, there was a Pharaoh. Where there was a Paul, there was a Nero. Where there was Jesus, there was a Pharisees. He always got that Antichrist. He always got that Antichrist spirit, and it'll be around to the end. We got overcoming. We've got to believe God. we got to press our way in. We've got to pray and keep our dedications and keep ahead of, step ahead of the devil. Don't let him get ahead of you. You stay ahead of him. There's always an opposing spirit. Out of all the motives, great. God used him so greatly. There was a Pharaoh. Every time he turned around, Pharaoh was right in his face. Yes. And God said, get a good look at it. You ain't going to see him no more. He done troubled you the last time. Get a good look. Now take that rod down. He removed that rod. Children of Israel just come. Three and a half million people just came over dry shot. God told them to stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. They went over. He turned around and said, move that rod. Get a good look at him. You ain't going to see him no more. He moved that rod and all. It was hell to him. Wall on the right and the wall on the left. That wall broke. That wall broke. When, 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 when Moses moved that rod, the wall of water broke and came down in on top of 
Pharaoh and his army. I'll destroy them all. He told him to set. He set a lot. She put him back asleep again. Put him in a lap again. And there was a world that's got many crafts to put you to sleep with. Spiritually to sleep. Get you occupied with so much in this world until you ain't got no time to pray and read. Halfway go to church. You know folks are so caught up in ball games and stuff because they ain't even got time hollering no more. Used to, a long time ago, the kids that did play ball, they wouldn't dare put it on church day. But now, man, they go off for whole weekends. They, they go all over the United States of America. And these little fellas have to drag it back. They drive all over the country on church day. They have no respect for God and His Word. And the need to be taught and your children need to be taught and you to be fed and taught. We need the word. We need to be fed. We have to have Jesus said, said to eat my flesh, drink my blood. You have no life. She put him to sleep one more time. And they come there and save his life. All seven of them. Got him bald headed. Seven blocks gone. She hit him again. Sleep, just dead asleep. Jesus. And then it was the world that put you to sleep again. You pull out, but if you go back and fool around the edges, it'll put you to sleep again. The things of the world will put you to sleep spiritually. You'll be captivated by things of the world. And you'll lose your prayer life. You'll lose your desire to study and to read God's word and to go to the house of God and be taught and said the word of God. We in a time, not only you, your children needs to be under the word. Well, I done saw so much mess. Yeah, God. Let me tell you, God ain't done a thing to you. It's man. God is still God. The Word is still right. It's man. It's man that falls and messes up. And don't even seem like they got no remorse. Don't even seem like they care if folks go to hell or not. It's a shame. But I want you to know Jesus cares. He cares. And I'm going to tell you, it ain't over till it's over. It ain't over yet. Jesus cares. I care. That's why I'm doing up here. I said, I care because I'm having struggles getting lots. We couldn't even get one in Mobile this year. Because that place, if even the little side roads, nobody want to fool with us. Ah, we don't want to fool with that mess. It's going to be a mess. They don't want it. Mobile don't want revival, but y'all to hear about it. She's trying to get something else. These cities that reject God and reject revival are going to get judgment. From Mobile. He said, least of that. Now look back in that vision I saw. Everything on the coast was covered with water. All I could see was water slap up. Went up like that. Ever. And I remember saying this. I looked back. I said, oh, Lord, I wonder that my children make it out. Lord, let me know to pray for my children that they will. Reminded me to pray that when tragedy strikes, when judgment comes, and it will come. Why? Because wickedness ain't stopping Ungodliness is worse than it's ever been. I believe tonight, saying freely, it's worse than Solomon and Gomorrah, and it's worse than the days of Noah. 
And in these times, God's look on, look, look into Hawaii, what's happening. Fire coming up out of the ground, folks. Fire shooting up out of the ground. Level that place. As far as you can see. People running to the ocean trying to keep them burning. They got there. There's a hurricane on the water. And some of them was running and then the sharks was eating them. Sounds like running from a lion, running into a bear. Running inside, leaning on the wall and the serpent bites you. You can't escape the judgments of God. There ain't but one way you can escape is get down on these old knees and repent. You can't run. You can't run and hide from God. You can't outrun God's judgments. You can jump into the ocean and the sharks will eat you. You can run from a bear and run into a lion. You can go inside of a strong house and a serpent will be waiting on you. You can't run. There ain't but one way to escape the judgments of God. Hallelujah. Have to get on your knees and repent and draw out of God and get back to God where you once was. And over there in Louisiana, fire. You know, all around the world, fires. I read to you. I read to you where he said in Revelation, uh, the book of Isaiah, he would send storms and winds and devouring fires. Devouring fires. One or not, chapter of Isaiah. Devouring fires. All around Sicily. Around the world. Fires is everywhere. Judgments. Judgments. Fire coming out the ground. They ain't saying much about that because they don't know how to explain it. But we know. Fire starts shooting down the ground. That's the judgments of God. That's God's judgment. I can tell you quickly what it is. That's God's judgment. That's, that's where man can't control God. That, that you can't put it out. They said they put it out in one place and pop up down somewhere else. They put it out there. It popped back out the ground somewhere else. God is showing this generation your only hope is me. Your only hope is on your knees. Only your hope is to return to God. I saw I saw something coming. It was off. And on the way God's people escaped was come together. Drop the hatchets. Drop all this junk. Let me tell you, you ain't going to heaven no how like that. You better get it straightened up. First chance you get. You better get on your knees. If you, if you know you ain't right, you got things in your heart. If this man had a dream, he told me about it. He said he was they was lining up for the judgment. He said, while well, he was headed to line up, and said, Jesus walked around to him and looked straight at him and said, Have you got anything in your heart against anybody? He said, No, I, I, I don't think I have. He said, Have you got anything in your heart against anybody? Lord, not that I know of. Have you got anything in your heart against anybody? Well, go ahead. He said, Lord, not as I know He said, Jesus turned. And walked away from him like he didn't know it. And was headed up to get on the throne. To start the judgment. But the last thing he told him, he was letting him know, don't you come in this line with something in your heart. Don't you get in here and stand before me with something in your heart. I know that life sometimes is bitter, low down, good for nothing people. Has hurt a lot of good folks. Sorry for Sorry, people. Yeah. Let me tell you, there ain't nothing that God can't heal. Yeah. Let God heal it. Yeah. If God can open the blind and eyes, He raise Lazarus from the dead. Had they been buried for four days, He can heal your heart. He can heal your mind. The things that people went through, that their mind torments from day after day after day. But I'm telling you, that's healing in Jesus. 
There's healing in Jesus. He is a healer. He will heal your mind. He'll heal your soul. I heard the story this young lady was telling. She went through something. got molested when she was little. She was going through what do you call that? Therapy. And somebody invited her to a little hole in the church. She went and they gave the altar call. She went down, got saved, and God delivered her. She came back home. Go to path, God save me. I'm healed. I'm free. I'm not tormented like I used to be. I'm totally free. Yeah. It come time the next day to go to therapy. She said, I don't need no therapy, Mama. I'm delivered. Yeah. You gotta go. The doctor said, Mama, Jesus delivered me. I don't need no therapy. My mind is solid. My mind is free. I'm healed in my mind. I'm healed. She said, she said her parents told her out of the house. She wouldn't go to therapy. Because Jesus had healed her mind. Hallelujah. He's a healer. Jesus is a healer. You don't have to live in torment. You don't have to live in pain. You don't have to live. Jesus is a healer. He come to heal. He come to heal. I come to seek and to save that which was lost. I didn't come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. No matter what you've gone through, there ain't nothing that God can heal. He can totally set you, make you free from anything. And everything. Her parents didn't understand because they hadn't had a real experience with God. She tried to explain to them, I don't need therapy. I'm delivered. I don't need the doctor. I'm delivered. I don't need no more talking to. I'm delivered. I'm free. My mind is free. I'm delivered. They didn't understand. She, you got to have this. You ain't got to have nothing but Jesus. You ain't got to have nothing but Jesus. Stand on your feet. Lift your hands. Lift your hands to Him and say, Lord, you can do anything. I don't have to have nothing but you. Lord, just you. Yes, to have you. He can heal your soul. He can heal that old twisted up, discouraged mind of yours. Lord, yes, people can get in a mess. It's, 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 it's awful. But people have to go through this one thing. Hallelujah. And I want you to know Jesus is a healer tonight. Heal your mind. Heal your soul. You don't have to live a life for me. I give you peace. 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 Whosoever, he said, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Jesus is still in the Savior. You'll save me tonight. You don't know Jesus. You don't know Jesus as by the blood of the Lamb. Tonight's your night. You can get out of your seat. Come right now. Kneel down this old-fashioned altar. And He'll save you. You make that step. Raise your hand. You'll save me. Hallelujah. 
He'll save me tonight. Thank you, Lord. You don't have to run no more. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come to Jesus. He's calling you. He's calling you, sinner. Backslider. Don't wait. Don't put off the day for tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow's going to bring you. Today's the day of salvation. Did you hear my voice? He said, come. Come, come. Hard not your heart. As it did in the day of provocation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift them hands up. Pray with me. Somebody needs to come. Run away. Thank you, Jesus. He's calling. He's calling. He's calling. Oh, calling you, calling you. Can't you hear the blessed saying? Calling you. He'll take you by the hand. Lead you to that promised thing. Can't you hear the blessed saying? Calling you. You've grown cold. You're not where you need to be with God. Come back. Come and kneel around these altars. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to admit you need something from God. Come and kneel. Come and kneel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come back to God. Come and kneel around this altar. Thank you, Jesus. He said, Lord, I want restoration. I want restore. Restore me, Lord. Give me back what the devil stole from me. Come and kneel around this place. Get up and come. The brothers on my right and the sisters on my left, come. Oh, let's come around these altars and pray. Let's come and kneel.
and they obey you. Peter said, Lord, if that's you, bring me to come. Jesus, you just said, come. Peter stepped out of that boat. Hallelujah. And he began to walk on the waves on top of the storm, even as you did, Lord. But God instantly, he began to get his mind. Got on the wind and the waves and the storms, and he began to sink, Lord. But Lord, he didn't wait till he went under the water, Lord. Before he called your name, he said, Lord, save me. And instantly, Jesus, you rest out your hand, and you picked him up, put him back in the boat, Lord. And Lord, I believe that's what you're doing tonight. You grab it, keep it by the hand of the heart. You're picking them back up, Lord. You're putting them back in the ship, Lord, of Zion. You're putting them back in the place that you got. Hallelujah. You're going to help them. You're going to help them get to the other side. And when they get to that other side, you're going to show them the glory. Oh, yes, we're going to see the glory. It might be dark and cloudy in your life tonight, but we're going to see the glory. We got the victory. Oh, would you reach out and claim the victory tonight? Oh, God, we give you glory. God, be healing. Oh, my God. Call the torment, God. Call it out better than my mind. God ain't even stood up and told it in many places. But Lord, you destroyed that power that you brought. A fear off of my mind many years ago, Lord. God, what a peace. What a peace that I enjoyed. A peace that I never thought I could contain. That I'll never reach out and grasp it. Jesus, you would take me and use me to cast out devils and raise up the dead. God even healed the sick, and I still had my dilemma. But hey, one day, Lord, I just walk up on the side of my bed, and I begin to wonder, Lord, God, God, I don't have these thoughts anymore. God, I don't feel these things anymore. I begin to go down memory lane. And I begin to mark things off in my mind. And I begin to think, mark, mark things off in my heart. That wasn't even there anymore. God, I begin to give it the glory. Yeah, they put out box Oh, God, I thank you tonight. Jesus, you can do it for me. You can do it for me, Lord. God, ain't nothing too hard for you. And I thank you for the living, Lord. I know you're a young destroyer. I know your mind healer. I know your heart healer tonight. Oh Lord, I'm not ashamed to tell the people that what I've been through. What you brought me out of, God, somebody had to tell me. God, I heard somebody about this preacher. Hallelujah, how he had come out, God. That put faith in my heart. And I told you, Lord, I said, as sure as he can come out. Gee, I know I can come out. He put a fire in me, Lord. Help us tonight. To grab hold of that faith, God. Whether it be not even fear. Whether it be just trembling. Whether it just be pain. God, whether it just be in these trial, jealousy, back, mind, the tail bearing. Whatever has been offending you. I'm here to tell you tonight that Jesus is able to deliver you. Lord, we lay it at the altar tonight, God. We don't know if it's the last night of the world of Bible, but Jesus, you do, Lord. God, but tonight we lay this down at the altar. We're going to put it at your feet tonight. When we stand up this night, we're going to leave this tent tonight victorious in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of your word through faith in your name. We believe it done by access in the name of Jesus through faith. In the Holy Ghost power, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for this revival. We love you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, lift your hands up in praise. Tell him you love him. Come on, tell Jesus you love you. Thank you, Lord. We're going to receive an offering. And if somebody needs prayer, we'll pray for you. If you can help us tonight, I'll pray for you as soon as I receive the offering. Please. 
We need you to help us. This is the last night, and we're going to be heading on back to going to Jackson, Tennessee next. And uh, I don't know if that'll be our last one or not. For this year, I don't know. But the Lord does. We need you to help us. Make that sacrifice and help us tonight. God bless you.